if I'm being real, I don't think anything is gonna happen. <laughs> what the hell? Oh no, oh no. Oh. This is so surreal. Look at this car. On the week of August 29, 2021, Hurricane Ida hit the southern United States coastline, causing mass destruction, especially in Louisiana. Aside from a couple of thunderstorms at the beginning of the summer, New York State hardly got any rain throughout summer 2021, but on the night of September 1st, that would all change. Remnants of Hurricane Ida had come up north, leading to some of the worst flooding in history in New York State. The evening of September 1st started off very normally. It was a couple of days after I finished my summer internship, but a couple of days before I had to start my summer assignments before school started. Around 8 p.m., my friend Ryan or Turbo Laser Gaming started streaming, and during that stream, I received a bunch of tornado warnings. Now, I live in southern New York, so tornado warnings rarely happen, and when they do, they're usually quite significant. I was so convinced that something with a tornado would happen that I was literally ready to take shelter in an internal hallway. But around 9 p.m., Ryan stopped the stream, and I went to record an intro to a potential video. All right, hi, I'm making this video uh, and realistically I'm probably not even gonna publish it because um, we got a tornado warning, not even a watch, a warning and uh, scared the crap out of me. A couple of minutes after making that video, Ryan actually texted me saying that the tornado warning was canceled. So there you go, nothing to worry about anymore, right? So then I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna post this video. And I went to post a video on my train channel. As I was editing the description of that video, my dad started frantically calling me, basically telling me to come to the window overlooking the driveway. So I did. And what I saw were these river rapid-like waters gushing down the retaining wall. It was on like, anything I had ever seen before in front of my house. So I run back to my room, grab my phone, and start filming because this was something. Okay, for once these flood warnings were not wrong. Look at this. What the hell? Oh my god. I have never seen a flood this bad. What the freak? Yo. Yo, yo, yo. All over. In here. It's flooding in here. Oh, yeah. Over oh. here, we are all flooded. You are all flooded. In the garage, right? No, no easy. Here. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. The oh. The garage door is closed? No, yes. it's... The garage it's door is closed. It busted open. Come on. That all happened in less than a minute. I go from being on my bed posting a video to being on the stairs seeing water gushing into my house. Now my house has never been flooded before. So my initial thoughts when I came on the stairs seeing a little bit of water in the house was that that was the only water we would get. It wouldn't be worse than that, but I was still freaking out a little bit. But then when I saw water start gushing in and taking the garbage cans with it, then I got worried and I was freaking out for real. And this all happened in 45 seconds. My mom and my dog Misha were already downstairs, so the first thing we did was we brought Misha upstairs. Then with sweatpants and socks, I went downstairs into the flood water with my mom, and she opened the door to the backyard. Now, if we didn't have that door, I can safely say that we would have had six feet of water. For the next 20 to 25 minutes, we were standing in front of the door and kind of kicking the water outwards so it wouldn't protrude into the living space too much, but it did, obviously. Not sure how effective that was, but that's what we were doing. Insane. 911 is not answering. Being like five minutes into this flood, we didn't know that we were not the only ones affected. My dad was upstairs trying to call 911, the fire department, anybody, but no one was answering. And that's because people had it way worse than we did, but we didn't know that at the time. We're dealing with garbage is here, food in the pantry. This is all gone, practically. This is so surreal. That's, those are Misha steps. Yeah. 1041. I only have socks once again. This water is pretty cold. The rain is not gonna stop for the next hour. And it's like all red as well. Huh? It's all red. Okay. It's all red and it's not stopping. I wish only that uh, it would not start flooding the lawn from the roof. 
The long, oh, no, I don't think so. It, it's only the... Oh, wait, the water looks like it's receding. The door is closing. The garage door just closed. When the water was receding, we thought that it was because the rain stopped, but it actually wasn't, and more on that later. When I was standing on the stairs, it looked like a river was flowing into my house. And that area downstairs is a legitimate living space. It's not just a basement. We have valuable items down there, and this flood caused tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Around 11 p.m., I went outside to my front yard to see what was going on there. I didn't record any of this because I was on a call with some relatives because my dad was calling them and I remember seeing a fire truck coming by and I was like oh yes the fire department's here no the truck just idled in front of my house for about five seconds with the lights flashing and then it drives off and then I'm like what the hell is going on can someone help us please but I would only later learn that these were some of the most catastrophic floods in New York State history I thought it was just us because originally we actually thought it was a drainage system issue because a couple of years ago people changed out the drainage system ironically to prevent floods and we thought Thought they just did a faulty job and that's why we're flooded but that wasn't the case oh you can see like dirt and stuff on the bottom here yeah yeah I decided to go outside a second time and actually film. And when I went outside, I discovered why the water was receding from the house, even though the rain was still going full force. That was because the water pressure was so strong that it completely busted down the retaining wall. And the bricks that made up the retaining wall guided the water away from the garage and around my house. The retaining wall collapsing potentially saved a couple of thousand dollars worth of damage. If the water level were to get any higher, a lot more things would have been destroyed. This front yard here, it's like destroyed. A third of the garage door is busted down. This front yard is literally not even the front yard anymore. The retaining wall got busted completely, almost. You can see remnants of the retaining wall. So why police cannot come if you are the only one in this situation? I don't know. We're not the only ones in this situation, but we didn't know that. When the water basically fully receded from my house, I went outside again, but with my mom. But this time I decided to actually walk on the driveway, which at that point had about one foot of water. Look at that. No, I didn't see this. Look at this car. Is anybody there? Look at this, this is like a swimming pool. Yeah, I see. There's a log in the middle of the road. So they have it bad there too, it's not just us. Oh really, this guy. Y'all are really going through here right now. That was the first moment when I realized that we were not the only ones affected by this flood and it wasn't the drainage system. After this, we went downstairs and thankfully all the water finally receded from the house. Oh, it's even receding down here, great. That's great. Oh, I can step here. Okay, there's like practically no water. Obviously, there still is water, but it's like nothing now, basically. Uh huh. I was just in here earlier today. My mom's room. Now, how on earth? That is my shoe. That was in the other room close to the door, and it's in here. So after this, we went upstairs, and we smelled what we thought was gasoline. Finally, the fire department had answered, and two firefighters came to the house. One of them went downstairs to check out the boiler and stuff to make sure it was safe to be in the house, while the other one stayed upstairs and told me and my dad what had been happening. And he was telling us that they literally had to go into houses and pull people out because some people had six feet of water. I, I, I was like in shock when I was hearing that. That was when I truly understood how catastrophic this hurricane was. Now, 
I'm not even sure if on the day of the flood, I realized the flooding was caused by the hurricane. But what that firefighter was saying really opened my eyes as to how catastrophic this whole thing was. The firefighter downstairs said that it was safe to be in the house. After that, we all attempted to fall asleep. Falling asleep was quite difficult that night just because of the pure shock from that. My brain was still trying to fathom how the hell a flood just happened. There were so many thoughts rushing through my mind as I was trying to fall asleep. It was nearly impossible. The next morning I woke up at 7 a.m. naturally, and usually I get up anywhere between 10 and 12 on summer days or weekends. That morning felt so weird. I remember exactly how it feels, but I can't explain how it felt. I went outside and looked at the damage to the retaining wall, the grass as well, like the grass, you know, the grass blades are usually up, obviously. They were literally like all flat. A lot of the driveway was wrecked. The retaining wall was absolutely wrecked. Downstairs was completely wrecked. And it was just so depressing to go downstairs and see mud everywhere, everything just all wet and broken, and that smell. The smell of flood water, I can't forget. I hate that smell so much, but I, I can't forget that smell. And after this, the recovery process started. I documented a little bit of the recovery process, and I posted some videos on Lightning Random content. Potentially, a part two to this video can come out where I explain and showcase the whole recovery process from the flood. In basic terms, today is November 18th, 2021. We're still not 100% recovered from the flood. Downstairs has basically been fully repaired though, and it looks like completely different because we replaced like the floors, a lot of the walls as well. A lot of the furniture had to be thrown out. We had to throw away like thousands of dollars worth of furniture and spend thousands of dollars to replace the floors and the walls because they were all wet and mold would grow. Downstairs is basically fully livable now. We still have a lot of items like in bags and containers and stuff which we need to sort out, and that's the story of the September 1st Hurricane Ida flood. Oh, and fun fact, if you remember before when I was talking about getting the tornado warnings and things like that, I was texting Blue, and I was saying, oh, we only need to worry about flood warnings, but they're usually no big deal. And then he was trying to say, uh, no, they kind of are a big deal, like New York does get floods. And I said, nope, you're not gonna get floods unless you live by the coast. The karma from that. Also, another fun fact, the flood also hit my school, and we were literally ready to go back to fully in-person learning based basically like post-COVID. I'm not saying post-COVID, COVID is still around obviously, but most other schools in New York are fully in person. The school got flooded and it took them three months to fix it. That seriously pissed me off because not only did my house get flooded, but now I have to do virtual school, which I don't like. But actually only a couple of weeks ago, we started going back fully in person, but I'm just glad that we're fully in person now anyway. So that's the end of this video. So thank you for watching and goodbye.